Hi, everybody, and welcome back to our podcast from the Kama Sutra to 2020, where we look at your questions, your concerns, even your worries around all things to do with sex and sexuality. So as always, we have with us Dr. Anvita Madan Behel. Anvita is a psychosexual therapist and she brings the psychological perspective to the advice that the Kama Sutra has to give. Welcome, Anvita. Thank you, Seema, and welcome to our podcast this week. Anvita, today I want to talk to you about a very important question. Sex for the first time. You know, we've been getting these questions from young women and young men equally for absolutely ages. And each one has been writing in with this, this little fear, a slightly different question, but this fear about how to do it the first time. And I think that it's time that we actually deal with this particular question because um, I think that we've both been down that path where we know what it was like the first time around, the worry that comes with it, the anxiety. And, you know, I think that we can help people with certain tips, with certain helpful hints to get past that. What do you think? Absolutely, you know, Seema, and if, and we've spoken about this often. I just feel like we can spend hours talking about what dress to wear for a party with friends, right? But we will never. How many people do you know who actually came and had a conversation with their friends or their family or older sibling or somebody to say, I'm thinking of having sex here are my concerns, worries, questions, apprehensions, whatever. None of us, none of us talk about it. And we talk about such frivolous things for hours. And this is such a important important thing thing. or, or such a milestone thing and comes with so much anxiety and we never talk about it. Absolutely. So I think that before we actually start giving them the, you know, the, the, um, emotionally based helpful hints and the things that we think are useful to know. Do you want to do some housekeeping? I know that there's some boring stuff that comes with first time sex as well, which is well, useful uh, to know. Boring essential things, but yes, you know, consent is the most important things. Know that you're ready for it. You want to do it. Don't feel pressurized to do it really. And when it means consent, it doesn't mean only between the partner and you, are you ready for it? Like really explore that deeply. You're not doing it because, oh, five friends have done it or I want to be the first one to do it or, uh, you know, my partner really wants to do it and I will lose my partner. There's just so many reasons that I think people engage in the first time uh, and not from because they want to do it, just because, you know, there are pressures there. So that is the first most thing. And the second thing is really read up and learn about the consequences of having sex. That is STIs and pregnancies. They are real. They can happen just by having it one time with somebody. Don't feel they are inappropriate conversations to have with your partner about if they've been sexually active before, have they ever been tested for STIs and or like what is the plan for using a condom? Like these are important conversations to have. So don't shy away from them. Um, And finally, the anatomy. Know your anatomy. We'll talk about it more as we talk about, you know, uh, more about the tips. But really learn about your sexual anatomy before engaging in sex. I think that is such an important point. So let's actually start with that because so many people are like, to be silly, I know where my body parts are. I can do this. But what they don't realize is that actually a lot of people don't know a lot about their body parts. And I think the first thing is um, a lot. Yes, there are people who get confused about which part of the vaginal area they should be penetrating. So that's important to know. But I think that the thing that confuses people the most is they have this image about the fact that there will be one long thing and one concave thing into which that long thing will fit and that it will merely slide in and slide out. And they don't realize that the concave thing, the vagina, 
has a bend to it. It is not straight and neither is the, the, the phallus. The penis is not a straight long thing either. It's got a bend to it. And also the way that our body parts are positioned, when you come together in different positions, they don't line up. It's not as if you can literally just take two geometrical instruments and put them together. The body doesn't align either. So there has to be a certain amount of manipulation done to get there. And you're absolutely right about that. Number of, you know, and people might be surprised or we were definitely surprised by this, but the number of couples that come saying they have a sexual problem and they've not been able to have sex. And once we have actually gone down the path, what we've realized is that they never had sex before and neither one of them knew the anatomy and knew where it has to go. And so one, so the first thing I would say for the women is, you know, try exploring your vagina, try rubbing your vagina, know where the vagina is and where the opening is. It feels very small, but as you, you know, masturbate or rub it, it will expand to, you know, accept the penis or your finger. So firstly, learn about your vagina and you can then help guide the penis into the vagina because sometimes men don't know. Like there's this idea that men just know it, right? Like, they don't know. And if it's their first time, they don't know where, uh, you know, it needs to enter. And secondly, a lot of times when they do penetrate, it hits a bone, like you're saying. And then they feel like, oh, it just wasn't going in. You know, it gets stuck. It's not going in. But it's what you're saying. It's a bend and you have to bend it and go up. So you have to raise your pelvic area a little bit for the penis to be able to go in. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting because that's where the pain comes because you go into that point, you you hit something and you feel that it can't go in. So now people are trying to force it. And I know that the issue of pain for most women, uh, most girls who've written in, this is the biggest issue in their mind is the amount of pain that it's going to cause. So we want to say that, yes, the first couple of times you do it, it will be painful. It's something you're not used to doing. It's not going to be painful through the entire time if you follow a few useful little tips, which we're going to talk about. But also, this um, the reason that it's painful is because of this little bend inside the vagina. And once you learn how to negotiate that, you're okay with it. And I guess that brings us very, very cleverly to the next point, which is about lubrication. We cannot stress it enough. Now, this is Something that we've talked about before, Anvita, haven't we? And um, people have come back with uh, all sorts of, like, who does that? Is there any reason to do it? But if I am already ex expressing some wetness inside me, then do I need more? You get all the all this... Um, Absolutely. As in, we, we, we did a whole video and the comments on it were amazing. But we have to remember, especially for the first time, the vagina is tight it hasn't you know the muscles haven't learned to relax your mind is preoccupied with many many stresses and worries am I doing it right am I looking good is it happening is it okay to happen what is going to happen am I going to be good at it and so and we spoke about it when we spoke about the lubrication the vagina gets wet when it feels around. And when you're thinking and worrying about all these things, your vagina is not getting wet. So one of the main things to do is to lubricate it. So at least you won't feel the pain, the friction that is you know, caused with the dry vagina and the penis entering is what causes the pain. So at least the lubrication is going to keep it wet. It's not going to hurt. It's going to allow the penis to slip in much easier. And so lubrication, is really your friend when we think about the first thing. You know, it is your friend. It is not something bad. It is really your friend when you're going to engage in sex the first time. And I have to also add that it's not a glamorous thing to do. So let's be honest over here. When you have sex, 
you know, you imagine a visualization is that, you know, there is this moment of smoldering passion, you're together. You're, and then you find, okay, suddenly I'm going to now pull apart. I'm going to take out this, uh, this tube of lu uh, lubrication. I'm going to squeeze some out now. How am I going to put it? It's not a glamorous thing to be doing. However, everybody at some point when they realize, when it clicks that this is important for their pleasure, everybody does it. I mean, I have had people say to me that we go into the toilet before we start and we lubricate because, you know, I don't want to be seen as somebody who has to do it because there is this internal shame about the fact that if my vagina is not getting wet enough, then there must be something wrong with me. And, and it isn't. feels like you're going to destroy the mood. Yeah, and I was going to add that actually it is not the first time it's not glamorous at all. Leave the new part of it because people create these beautiful images of how it's going to be and how it's going to look and it's going to be romantic and it's going to be long and it's going to have the fireworks. And most people are disappointed because it's nothing like they imagined. Um, it is just full of stress and worry. It's not uncomfortable. Most you know, women won't orgasm the first time and it would just be way shorter than they had imagined. So there are just so many elements. So I just want to put it out there. There's nothing wrong with you if you're disappointed with your first time. Like any skill, it takes a long time to get better at it. And the first time you try out anything is in all probability your worst time and then you get better at it. Yeah, prepare to be underwhelmed. I think that that's one of the biggest things that people will put aside an entire evening because they imagine this to be taking place over such a long period of time. It's going to be underwhelming. It's going to be very quick and it's not going to be as you imagine it to be. But remember, as the Kama Sutra always says, it is an art form. You have to practice it to get better at it. And we promise you that if you do it a few times and you get, um, get to grips with some of the things, it will get a lot better. Pleasure will come. But your first time, the pleasure won't come from the actual penetration. So you must really understand that you focus on the foreplay. It is foreplay, foreplay, foreplay. It's very important. And as a matter of fact, even before the penetration, we would recommend that you get your partner or yourself to actually insert fingers into your vagina just to loosen it up a little bit, get it used to the fact that something will be entering. Yeah, and you know, and, and when we think about it, about you know, it being quite if we are breaking myths here, it's very counterintuitive to what we have imagined or seen. So for men, it always is like you know, is seen as it you have to be fast and it has to be long. And in all probability, you will come very quickly, you know, because the arousal is so soon and you've penetrated someone for the first time in all probability, you will come very quickly. So in fact, rather than going very fast, you should go take it very slow. The slower you take it, the longer you'll have to last. But it's also okay if you have had this conversation or if you've had this video, that you might come very quickly and that's okay. It'll be over time that you'll be able to stay longer and not ejaculate. And for women, it might be like, you know, if a man comes too quickly and you have you are unable to have penetrative orgasm, don't make a big deal about it because it is the first time. Have an oral orgasm and it will be through time that you would be able to have a penetrative orgasm. And it might take many, several times before you can have a penetrative orgasm. And it doesn't mean that your man's not a good lover or you're not a good lover just because it takes time. And I want to add with this thing that we started that, you know, um, at the beginning, there is pain. So the first time around, it is painful because one doesn't know what one is doing and you also don't know what kind of position to get your body into. So the Kama Sutra, of course, recommends that every bedroom should have eight different types of cushions in eight different shapes, which you put under different parts of your body. But that's, you know a more exciting thing so that you can change the angles of penetration. But I do think that 
what you could start with is one basic question, which you put under your bottom. Because as Anvita said earlier, that if your pelvis is raised, the angle of penetration becomes easier. You can make this even easier on yourself if you actually lift your thighs up so that you can wrap your legs around your partner if your partner is on top. You wrap your leg, legs around the partner. The, the straighter your thighs become, the easier that entire angle of your body becomes. So penetration just becomes easier to handle. And once you have penetrated, even if you've used lubrication, you have to understand that lube, lube is not enough sometimes. Sometimes you need to add more. As Amrita was just saying that, you know, people, men particularly, we feel that they have to go fast and long. And so this, this idea of the thrust being hard in and out can really dry up the vagina also, the friction. So if, if you're feeling pain and it's getting to be uncomfortable, rather than going through discomfort and being miserable about it, stop, let the person pull out, re-lubricate and start again. It's so worth it for both of you. And Anita, would you like to tell them that they will not become limp? I think that's another fear that sometimes happens. Yeah, and so, you know, just adding to the point you were saying that communicate your in pain. I think this is really the communication bit. You know, when we think or imagine sex the first time, we only imagine it as, oh, there'll be groans and there'll be moans and there'll be like, there's no conversation happening. It just silently, everybody understands everything. You know, people can read each other's mind and it just happens. It doesn't communicate because remember this, if you're in pain and you continue to bear with the pain that memory stays and you actually get fearful about having sex the next time because each time you're going to engage in sex you're going to say oh shit it's going to hurt I don't want to do this so it actually it actually has a long-term implication so it's better you tell the person it's hurting can you stop the man is not going to go limp even if you know if the penis does go limp for a few minutes it's very easy with foreplay to re-arouse or erect the penis. So don't worry about it. In fact, it will just make the foreplay longer and more enjoyable. So don't worry that, oh my God, if we stop now, everything will end. It will be a stop, start, stop, start. But that, if you take it in the stride, it actually makes the sexual experience longer um, and more enjoyable. Definitely. I think the next bit I'd like to get to is um, this idea of the first time that people have sex. There is um, this intense pressure on how you're looking. You know, when you get used to it, you realize that when you're in bed together, the, your partner is not going to be thinking about anything. From a woman's point of view, I know how women are like, oh my God, but you know, is my bikini line waxed? Are my toenails done? Have I got the right kind of lingerie on? It's fantastic to have all that. Nobody's really going to be thinking about it. However, it's in your mind. So acknowledge it. If you feel that that's going to cause you anxiety, go ahead and prepare yourself for it. Go and have a spa day. Or at least go and have a little beauty salon day. Get yourself waxed if that's what you want to do. Dress yourself up a certain way. As a matter of fact, Anvita, the Kama Sutra says that this is supposed to be a really special experience, you know, where, where you dress up for it. So, um, the, you know, the Sola Shringhar, the whole idea of the Sola Shringhar is that you treat the, the sexual encounter as something special that you're going into and you give it all of that acknowledgement. So you perfume yourself, you beautify yourself, you go to it feeling good. And somehow that makes you feel good about yourself as well. It's a huge upliftment for your own inner mood. Well, you know, definitely you're just taking away stresses and pressures, right? Like if you, we are, and, and you know, we are talking about that when it's the first sexual experience, you're totally in your head. You're totally thinking about, am I doing this right? Am I doing this right? So if you're worrying about, you know, oh, somebody's going to notice my nails not done, then your mind is there than actually being engaged in the sexual act. So if you can 
take away some of your worries. Obviously, it helps a lot, you know. Um, and I think it just makes it even, the pressures will be there. But if there is comfort with your partner, you know, last week we had Nikita and she was talking about trust and comfort with your partner. And if that is present, I think it just, makes it even better in some ways, like there's less pressure. Um, so having less pressure and feeling sexy obviously helps with the arousal. And when you feel sexy about yourself, that's when you feel aroused, not when somebody else is saying you're looking so sexy, because if you're not feeling sexy, the world can say it to you, but it's not going to make a difference till you feel sexy. Absolutely. And um, the other thing that a lot of people uh, write in about is whether they should have the lights on or off. Well, you know, lights on and off is something that you come to as a personal choice once you've had sex a few times. It's something that you grow into. For the first time around, if you're feeling nervous, if you're feeling conscious, if you're feeling like you don't know what you're doing, then by all means, put the lights off because it'll give you a little bit of Dutch comfort. It'll give you a little bit of extra, like a boost almost. But if it's pitch black, then also it's going to make it quite uncomfortable. So if it is nighttime, put the lights off, open the curtain. So that there's may, maybe a little bit of moonlight coming in. Just you don't want to be in a situation where you feel completely like you can't see and that's going to just raise your stress levels. Yeah, and you know, so I, I was, I, when I think about, when I hear you say about all this, like setting up of candles or lights or what to wear and all of it, um, I was reading Americana again and the character in it, um, they, they're in a relationship, their girlfriend, boyfriend for a very long time. And they've decided to wait to have sex and they've been sexually active, like the kissing, the touching, the all of that. Um, and she really talks about it at length that when they have it the first time, uh, it happens all so suddenly, like they just, it happens in the moment and she hasn't planned for it. And while it's happening, she's so disappointed by the anticlimax of it. Like she had imagined it to be like after a long wait, it would be something special. It would be something glamorous or it would be something that would be planned. And, you know, it would be a big deal basically. And it happened within yeah. moments without it being any big deal. And she was really disappointed in it. Um, and I think that's how it mostly happens for most people. Like it happens unplanned, suddenly. Um, and they are really later on, they think, oh, I didn't want it that way. Um, so one, if you don't want it that way, then plan, like Siva is saying, you know, actually plan for it, think about it, talk about it. Um, and, uh, and otherwise, if it does happen unplayed, don't feel disappointed. There can be a second time. You can make it happen the way you like it. Uh, don't feel disappointed uh, by how or when it happened. Don't live in the regret. Yeah, I think just it's just about coming to that understanding that it's a first time thing. Um, and I, I think that there might be one in 10 million that has a great experience the first time. Most people don't. And I think the final thing that I have over here that I was thinking of was um, to keep it as simple as possible as far as positions go, because it could be that you have been in a relationship with somebody and you're physically active otherwise, uh, intimacy wise, but haven't actually had sex. So you've got the conversation, you've got the um, emotions between you, you've got the adventurous spirit of stuff that you do together and you feel that you're really ready. And because of everything that you share, you think that this is also going to be a fabulous adventure that's going to make, um, well, fireworks go off in in the night sky and there is a tendency in those situations to feel that you can really get very very creative with it I think our first um, our, our uh, advice for this first time would be to keep it as simple as possible where positions go yes 
Yeah, like don't think it's the first time. So everything I know about sex needs to happen at that point. You know, I I have learned about the kissing. I've learned about anal. I've learned about the, like I'm going to do just everything in this first time. There will be more opportunities. There will be more time. Keep it simple. Keep it comfortable. Keep it. You know, the more simple you keep it, the more enjoyable it will be. So focus. on you know the simplicity of it the moment of it uh, the fun of it rather than thinking oh i need to get 10 on 10 and i need to show all my tricks this time it's not about showing all your tricks it's about the enjoyment in some ways so focus on that rather than how much you know and how much you can show I think actually that's a really good point and with the um the enjoyment the fun. Uh so that's another thing that we always say that if you laugh together it sort of lowers any inhibitions because most people again take it as this very intense experience you know the smoldering passion that's how we visualize it that there will be the smoldering passion and there will be silence and you will look deeply into each other's eyes and things will go pop well I tell you what it generally doesn't happen like that and if you can actually laugh you know because it's an exploration for you whether it's the first time for both of you or if it's the first time for one of you the idea is to make it if you really want to make it into an adventure understand that you're exploring something and laugh about it be ready to giggle about all the things that you do wrong imagine you're baking a cake and you decide to do something with your batter and then it goes all over the place and gets on your face you would probably giggle about it do the same thing while you're trying sex for the first time yeah you know images that comes to me is that somebody's trying to insert a penis and they can't get it in and it i'm sure it does happen that way that you it happens it. all the time yeah 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 and so if you just laugh about it and guide the other person or you know uh, you know just giggle or laugh about it it will not make either of you feel the shame of not doing it it'll actually keep the arousal high remember that when we feel judged or we feel shame the arousal goes away that's what causes uh the arousal to go so that might lead to the vagina not becoming you know dry or it might make the penis lose its erection so if we keep the fun or joy in it rather the shame and judgment it will actually keep the arousal high it will make it fun you will enjoy it uh, you might not even be able to penetrate for example the first time uh, but you will not leave the experience feeling like or oh, i'm unable to you will leave the experience saying oh that was fun we're going to try it again you know and maybe learn more about it the next time and that's a way better way to go about it rather than leaving saying oh i'm not going to try sex again because it was so bad i think that happens also with a lot of young men who try it for the first time the anxiety of performing is so much that they cannot get a decent erection and they come away from it thinking that they have either um erectile dysfunction or there's something wrong with them and this whole thing about you know being judged it's funny how we have surrounded this entire act of pleasure with so much taboo and shame that if you do it it is shameful if you cannot do it it is shameful it just it's like an an unending field of misery that we've created for something that should be a lot of fun yeah absolutely like you know it's it's just you know we have to be a good enough lover we have to be you know do it right it needs to like uh, and then we shouldn't do it because we, we become bad people if we engage in sex um so how and it is this is something when people think about having sex for the first time you are overcoming all that shame and taboo and embarrassment and how it's bad and everything that is there at the back of your mind you know um because you are overcoming all of that to engage in sex uh, and that's a reality and we should remember that 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 is a reality of the first time experience um that the context is not that of pleasure the context is that of morality and taboo and shame in some anxiety yes 
So I made copious notes, um, Anvita, while you were speaking, and I'm just going to sum them up so that for anybody, whether you're a man or a woman having sex for the first time, here are, are tips and helpful hints to help you to get through this first experience with as, as little anxiety, as little pain as possible, so that going forward, it can be a joyous experience. So the first thing to do is to remember that it is going to be an underwhelming experience. Don't be thrown by this. Don't, be, don't come away thinking, God, that was absolutely no point at all. Remember, it is the case for everybody. You will feel pain to a certain extent. It is very natural. Generally, it is women who feel pain. Most men don't feel pain the first time around. But that doesn't mean that they won't because it's an individual thing. If the woman is very tight, it can be that the man will also feel pain. To get over this pain, uh, lubrication is your first go-to step. Very, very important. Invest in a good lube. Use it and use it copiously. Use lots. Not a glamorous thing to be doing in the middle of everything, but really, really useful and will pay dividends. So it's an important thing. Use a cushion under your pelvis to bolster your um, pelvic area up and keep your thighs upright as far as possible. So wrap your thighs around your partner's back. If you can get your thighs over here to their shoulders that even higher, perfect because it will make it easier. Foreplay, foreplay, foreplay. Very, very important. It will get you past all the awkward bits. And it's also an in-between go-to time. So if you've actually penetrated, it's really painful, pull out, go back to more foreplay, back to more lube. You will be amazed at how useful you find it. And even if it is the case that a man, as Anvita said, will in most likelihood come very quickly the first time, even if you've come, guys, and the woman hasn't, pull out, you've had your little bit of orgasm, you've had your ejaculation, pull out and continue to do this for her at least for a little while. Um, if you are having anxiety about your body, do the best you can for yourself before you go into it. Honestly, nobody will notice once you're in that position, but if it makes you feel better, go for it. Do what makes you feel good. If you need to have the lights off, put the lights off. It's not a problem, but keep some little bit of light just so that you can see what's going on. You don't want to be groping around in the, in the dark. Um, there is no such thing as I have to be 10 on 10, like Anvita said. There are no standards for being a good lover. Nobody has set those standards. Some vague person somewhere says, this is what comes with being a good lover. It's not true. There are no, there's no metrics for this one. Okay, keep it as simple as possible. Um, don't get acrobatic. Laugh as much as you can. Enjoy it, giggle together. Let it be a shared experience. And your conversation, explain to each other, communicate to each other what is hurting, what is not feeling good, what you should do, whether you need to take a, a pause, etc. And finally, as Anvita said, STIs are a reality. So please do not compromise on the condom. I think that is an extremely important thing to remember. Pregnancies and STIs, it only needs to happen once for this to happen and make your life very miserable. Is there anything that I've left out, Amrita? No, I was just, you know, I was just going to say that prepare for it. So keep that condom and it don't make it a responsibility for men that they need to arrange for the condom. And also, if you are a gay couple, lubrication and condoms are as important for you as, you know, as they are for a heterosexual couple. So be prepared keep the condom ready. You can now go and buy it anywhere. And I guess the most important thing, as we said, is fun. You know, think about it as something that you're engaging with for fun and enjoyment. It's not a test. It's not a, you know, a pressured situation. Um, it will get better. Remember, you will get better at it. Uh, so don't feel like, don't judge yourself for the first time. 
Thank you, Anvita. I think that makes a great deal of sense. And this is not just for people who are having sex for the first time. If you've had sex and then not had it for a while in the middle and are going back to it after a long time, this is equally useful for you. So I hope that you find this video very helpful. I hope that you find this the advice that we've shared with you today very useful to you. And we hope that this leads for you uh, to your having an amazing experience as you get a, a little bit further into your relationship. As always, do like, comment, subscribe on the video. If you have any questions at all, please send them in to info.seema.anand at gmail.com. And if you wish to get in touch with Anvita for a consultation of some kind, she is now on anvita.madanbehel at gmail.com. So that's Anvita spelled A-N-V-I-T-A dot madanbehel, M-A-D-A-N-B-A-H-E-L at gmail.com. Take care, stay safe. We'll see you next week.